you can see, my mornings start very, very early around here. The boys wake up at 6am sharp, far too early for me to be chatting away, hence why I'm beginning this video with a voiceover. Anyway, at 6am, the boys get their first bottle of the day. They're always hungriest here and normally polish off 8 ounces each. About an hour later, they will have their breakfast. We have moved on from purees and are now following baby led weaning. So today I am preparing them a kiwi, a banana, some Philadelphia on toast, and some scrambled egg left over from yesterday. At the moment, breakfast seems to be the meal that the boys eat the least at. But as you all know, this is just a phase and I'm sure soon they'll be eating just as much at every other meal. After every meal, Hendrix has a quick clean up, and then so do I. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to what my baby eats in a day times two. I pretty much feed them the same thing. Not pretty much, I feed them exactly the same thing. I haven't really noticed that they dislike any certain foods yet, pardon me, or um, are fussy about certain foods, it really changes day by day, week by week. Some mornings they will love banana, other mornings they won't. So they have the same thing and they both eat different amounts of each thing, but that's fine and that's great. So it is now about 11 o'clock, they've just woke from their nap and had their second set of bottles. You are heavy lump. <laughs> we are still on four bottles a day. I I kind of feel like I should have been uh, reducing this, but especially with the weather at the moment, it's really hot and they do drink pretty much all of what I give them. So the morning bottle is eight ounces, the two in the day are six, and the one before bed is eight. So um, they're having a lot of milk still, and then obviously you'll see how much they eat through their meals. But um, yeah, Jack, you gonna say hi? Look, who's that? You say hi? Say hello. Give away. <laughs> um, Jack is currently, I think, teething very badly. So he's a bit temperamental. So if there's a lot of screaming in some of the clips, that is why. But um, yeah, they've had the second bottle. I'm gonna give them a little bit of time and we'll have a snack. Or oh, actually, we might do it now. We'll have a snack now because um, they'll have lunch soon. So yeah, we'll do a snack. Okay, so the boys are currently having um, of these Gerber baby whipped melts. They're banana and pear, they absolutely love them and we don't make a habit of eating on the floor like this but normally when we're having a snack, we are out and about so they'll have it in a stroller or um, in a high chair somewhere but yeah, we have been to the park a few times this week so they just eat sitting like this at the park so I figured it's too much effort to put them in the high chairs just to give them a little snack so they sit and have those on their mat. Hendrix tries to steal them all. Um, but yeah, they love these, especially the banana and pear ones. <laughs> you threw that one. I'm gonna get distracted already. <laughs> Are they nice? Are they lovely? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've creeped up here while the boys are content down there. It doesn't normally last very long, so I thought now was a good time to prepare some food for them for lunch. So today I'm thinking to give them avocado, some ground turkey and rice, maybe some tomato, and then some yogurt, perhaps for dessert if they still seem hungry. Um, I'm trying to balance their meals with protein, carbs, and fat 
as much as I can, but sometimes it becomes tricky, especially with the protein, because we haven't explored too many beans and things like that yet. And um, there's only so many meats that I'm comfortable giving them for now. So they have a lot of eggs, they love eggs, and we do a lot of ground meats, a lot of fish, and just softer things so they don't have to chew too much and they gag less but we have had success with baby led weaning it's going so much better than the purees were and maybe i'll talk to you all a bit later because i know i haven't done much updates on their sort of weaning journey since the very beginning i think when they were six months so a lot has changed they've come a long way and they're doing really well and they love their food so it's making a racket down there i'll get preparing their food and we'll talk all about that later maybe when they go down for their nap let's get preparing lunch Okay, as I was telling you all in my last video, we have this pen here as a barrier for them to get into the door. And watch when I move it back. <laughs> it is literally like letting animals out of a cage. Mm, careful. They're pretty good at going up, but they have no idea how to get back down. Come on, go forward. Let's not try and sit there, darling. That's very dangerous. Can we go forward? Go on in. Don't you dare think about coming down here. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna go and have lunch. You're not very patient, are we, when it comes to lunch? As for the avocado guys, I cut it in half. I didn't do this earlier because I thought it would go brown. As you can see, that's Jack. He's being like this a lot of meal times and I think it's because of his teeth. Anyway, we cut them in just to slices basically. Anyway, they love avocado. Some tomato. So sometimes try to eat with the boys but today I've, I'm a bit unorganized and we need to go grocery shopping so there's not a lot there and um, yeah I've been rushed for time so today they're just having their lunch together but I'll always sit here with them and I think it's important not to rush them not to stress out at meal times just take it stride by stride they make a mess that's fine um, but yeah <laughs> it's fun looking back at this and how they've changed since six months when I was giving them puree. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about was how I feed them. So I've seen a lot of other mums put all the food out in front of them in one go, and I would love to be able to do that, and I've tried doing it numerous times. A lot of the food goes straight on the floor. Um, it's almost like they get overwhelmed with too much stuff in front of them. So for the time being, this is how we're doing it, and I'll just sort of top up the trays as they eat. And um, another thing that I had to speak to the pediatrician about on their nine month checkup was sometimes they'll only eat one certain type of food. Like the breakfast, this normally happens more than any other meal where they will just eat the fruit and nothing else. And he just told me, instead of giving them loads and loads of fruit, make sure you give equal amounts of each food. And then if they stop eating everything but one, that kind of means they're done. Don't just keep piling them with strawberries, say. So. It's very hard. When they love something, it's hard not to give them loads of it. Is that nice? Good boy. Hmm? No 
we're feeding Hendrix today. Please. Can you go back to the table, Hendrix? Hendrix. Hendrix. Go back to the table. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Is it nice lunch? Do you want some more avocado? something and they have it in their mouth and they drink water it's more of a choking hazard so I do have a sippy cup but we're still using these easy peasy cups at meal times just to get them used to drinking out of an open cup and they're very good at it they just choke a lot on the water and they spill it everywhere so we just do a little bit of water you okay buddy just sip remember to breathe take it all down at once don't you Good job. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it all over me. He used to drink. Good boy. Is he nice, Henry? Are you still hungry? So now we've got one that's finished and one that's still hungry. because they will not eat anything else if they get the fruit on their plate. So, blueberries at the end, just check you don't want a couple more. Henry is the fruit man in particular. Lunch is finished. We're having a dance party, aren't we? The music's on. Boys are going to wake up any minute and I've just remembered that I wanted to sit and chat to you all a little bit about their journey with food and weaning and all that stuff. So let's hope we can get a second of peace because honestly if I try and film when they're awake they are just everywhere and they cause carnage and they want this camera. Like the camera is life basically. So let's put you here and let's have a quick chat. Um, so yeah I remember I did a video on weaning at six months, right? And I was telling you all like the book that I was following and how I was gonna start feeding them. Um, and we did pretty much puree the whole time and they didn't really eat much. Um, I think I documented all that. It was all just kind of like a learning curve of like, this is what we're doing, we're sitting and eating. Um, and then we moved. So I think it was the week that they turned seven months that we actually moved down here to LA. And from what I can remember, do you know, I cannot remember. I feel like so much has happened so quickly and I can't remember stuff. But I think that that week I totally wrote off feeding them and I just did milk. I don't remember ever on the journey like feeding them in the hotel room and Airbnbs and stuff. So I think it was all just too much. So we didn't do that. And they had a week of just milk. And then when I got to LA, it was quite hard to restart it all again and I felt all a bit like lost. And I remember thinking like, really, they really should be starting to understand that they're, they're eating now at these times. So I made a plan and I went full pelt with it and basically I prepped a load of stuff, froze a lot of stuff and started mixing up baby led weaning and purees. I think Jack mostly was going through a stage of like hating the spoon when I was trying to spoon feed him. Or it could have been Henry, can't remember, but I was getting so frustrated myself and they were getting frustrated. I was like, this is not working. We need a new plan, which is mostly why I started the baby led weaning. Also, as you all know, there's loads of advantages to it as well, but I was just so scared. So it took me a lot longer than I thought, but probably about eight months I'd really started doing it and I was just loving it. And I never turned back, honestly, like thinking about two months 
ago that they didn't even eat anything on their own is mad to me because now they just eat everything and anything. So a big thing that I used was the website Solid Starts, absolutely incredible. You can literally type in the search bar any particular food and it tells you how to prepare it, how to cut it, how to serve it and everything like that, depending on your baby's age. And I think it's normally from six to nine months, they have it a certain size and a certain way and then nine to 12 months it changes. So really, really good. And you can end up giving your baby such a variety of foods because you don't feel nervous in the fact you don't know how to prepare it properly. So I 100% recommend going on that website and having a look at it. They've got loads of information and it's so, so helpful. So that's basically all I used. Um, I was still using that book and still making a lot of those recipes and batch freezing them. Um, my battery is gonna die. <laughs> Oh, not what I need right now. But yeah, that's basically it. That's how we got to the point that we're at now. And they just love their food. They eat a lot. I never know if I'm giving them enough or too much or what, but I did ask the pediatrician at the nine month checkup and he said three meals a day, two snacks and the milk and just keep feeding them until they don't want to eat anymore. He said with baby led weaning, it's a lot easier to know they don't want anymore. And I'll be honest, my boys normally finish the food or obviously half it goes on the floor, but they'll end up like just favoring one item and wanting to eat loads of that. And then I know it's kind of time to stop. I'm not just gonna pile them with strawberries or blueberries. So yeah, I'm so proud of them. And I'm so proud of me finally being able to like relax and do it because it is nerve wracking. And God forbid anything happened. If they were to choke on something, I know I would be a disaster. Um, so it was a huge thing for me, but they are so much more adaptable than we think and they just learn so quickly. So they've done really, really well, but choking is no joke, it's a huge thing. I did a lot of research and watched a lot of things on YouTube to make sure I felt comfortable. So by no means, if you don't feel right about it, do not start doing it. Um, I know they say that the worst thing is if you are nervous in front of them eating, it's not gonna be helpful for them, they will sense it. So yeah, I'm just waiting for them to wake up now. I better go charge this and then um, they're gonna have another bottle of milk and then dinner and then a bottle before bed. So I'll see you at dinner time probably. For dinner, I've prepared the boys some pasta and broccoli, which I'm just adding a touch of olive oil to as I don't have any sauces, some raspberries, and one of these once upon a farm squeeze balls, which they just love. I'll be using this easy peasy spoon alongside the squeeze ball just in case they want to give it a go. Today, guys they're gonna finish up here and then have their last bottle of milk before their bedtime routine and that's it for what they eat in a day if you like this one let me know and we'll try and do one every month as they eat more and more you have a hair stuck to your face and uh, yeah thanks all for watching see you next week <laughs>